everybody, my name is Quinn and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be bringing to you my February wrap up and my March TBR. Now I didn't exactly get to my goal this month. College has been really crazy for me this month so I didn't read as much as I wanted to but I still got a pretty good amount done and I'm proud of that. The first book that I read in the month of February was City of Heavenly Fire by Cassandra Clare. And that's one reason I'm not too disappointed that I didn't get to my goal this month was because this is a really big book. I think it's like 700 50 pages around, I'm not sure. For those of you who don't know, City of Heavenly Fire is the sixth and final book in the Mortal Instrument series by Cassandra Clare. That's really why I'm not going to go into the plot too much because it would just spoil way too much. But I can give you my thoughts on this book. I absolutely loved this book. It's not really too often that a book can make me laugh or cry and this book made me do both. I really have such a strong emotional connection to these books. I mean, I started the series in middle school and now I'm a freshman in college and I'm finishing it and I just feel like it's a very big moment in my reading life because it was such a big part of my like teenage years and my growing up and I'm really sad to see it go. I feel like if we had the movies, we'd still have something to look forward to. And I know everyone has their different opinions about the Shadowhunters TV show, but I'm not personally the biggest fan on it. If you want to see a video on my opinions, comment down below. But it's just not something I'm seeing myself continuing watching for many different reasons. Now I will warn you all, if you have not read City of Heavenly Fire, do not even look at the description for Shadowhunter Academy, which is Cassandra Clare's new, like, e-novella series that'll probably eventually be a bind up because it will spoil you just the summary about a huge plot twist at the end of City of Heavenly Fire. So just do yourself a favor, don't look at that. But overall, I really enjoyed City of Heavenly Fire. I can't believe it's over, but five out of five stars, six stars if I could give it that. The next book that I read in the month of February was The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. This book takes place in the 1800s. A scientist builds a time machine and he travels to the year 1800,000 AD. He experiences a lot of differences between his time and theirs, particularly that now there is two different races of humans, the Eloys and the Morlocks, and he has to deal with trying to get back to his own time when his time machine is taken from him. I really enjoyed this novel. It made a lot of social commentaries on class and the environment and what we're doing to the environment and I think that it's really fascinating how this was written in the 1800s but a lot of it still applies to where I think our future is headed today. So if you want to read an older time travel novel that's more political than fantasy, I would definitely pick this up. My only really problem with this novel is that there was too much description and not enough dialogue. It was also a frame story, which I'm not really too much a fan of. So for that, I'd have to give it a 3.75 out of 5 stars. The third book that I read in the month of February was Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets by J.K. Rowling. Now this completed month two of my Harry Potter challenge where I read one book a month from January to July, which is kind of perfect because Harry Potter and the Cursed Child comes out at the end of July. So it's almost like my Harry Potter challenge is continuing into month eight. So that's kind of cool. I'm really glad that I picked up these series because when college gets really stressful, I just want to read something fun that is fantasy and makes me happy and almost brings me back to my childhood. And this is definitely what these books do for me. But I'm really reading these and seeing how close the books are to the movie adaptations, which I think is really a great testament to both J.K. Rowling's writing and the film studio. I think that a really good adaptation is sometimes hard to do with the constraints that you have and I really like applaud them for that. But yeah, I just, I really love this book. I flew through it. It's just really fun and easy to read. Now that I'm also reading these, I want to get them in different editions, but I don't know what editions I want. I don't know if I want to order the UK ones because the covers are beautiful or if I want to get the other US edition with the Hogwarts spines because I like the covers on the UK better but the US spines better so tell me down in the down bar which one that you think I should get but I really loved this book 5 out of 5 stars. And the last book that I read in the month of February is Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. Denard? Dennard? I'm not really sure. I will admit that I'm only halfway through this book. As I said, college got really stressful this month and I had a lot of assignments and I'm working on a TV show at school. 
So I only got halfway through, but I already really enjoy it. I think it can get a little hard to get into in the beginning just because this book is high fantasy. I think that might just be because I haven't read much high fantasy, but because it's such an intricate world with so many like complicated names and rules to their society, it can be a little to get into, but I really like all the character dynamics, um, particularly Safi and Iz. I think that it's really important to have strong female friendships in YA and that's not something you see too often so I'm really glad I picked this up. It has been all over book two for a while. I can't wait to keep reading it and if you find yourself reading this and being like it's the first 50 pages are really kind of hard to get through, just stick through because it does pick up and it gets really good. So I can't get this to start reading right now because obviously I haven't finished it but I should probably be done reading it by the time this video is up. But I'm really excited to finish reading this. It's one of my first high fantasy books and maybe this will give me the push I need to read Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin because those books intimidate the heck out of me. So now I'm going to be moving on to my March TBR. The first book that I will read in March is obviously I will be finishing Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. I'm really excited for that. The second book that I plan on reading in the month of March is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling. Now this finishes the third month of my Harry Potter challenge. So I'm really excited to get into this because I think this is the movie that I probably remember the least from. So it'll be interesting going into this book without knowing too much about it. So I'm really excited to pick this up because these books always just put a smile on my face. The third book that I plan on reading in the month of March is one of my most anticipated reads of 2016 and that is Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. I'm not going to talk too much about the plot of this novel but just know that if you haven't read City of Heavenly Fire then Lady Midnight will be a large spoiler for that because Lady Midnight takes place five years after City of Heavenly Fire and just because the Shadowhunter world is so different after the war with Sebastian, so many things have changed. You definitely want to read City of Heavenly Fire first before you read Lady Midnight. But what I can tell you is that it follows Emma and Julian at the Los Angeles Institute five years after City of Heavenly Fire, and it kind of deals with the aftermath of Sebastian's war. And for those of you who want to pick it up, Lady Midnight comes out on March 8th. And the last book that I plan on reading in the month of March is November 9th by Colleen Hoover. This story follows Fallon and Ben, and Fallon meets Ben on her last day in Los Angeles before she moves to New York. They fall in love, or romance ensues, something like that, and every year they decide to meet on November 9th. But one year, Fallon starts to suspect that Ben isn't telling her the whole truth. He's an inspiring novelist, and she suspects that he's only using her for inspiration for his novel. As I said in my book haul, which I will link down below, if you haven't seen that, go check it out. But I talked more about this book, but I'm really excited to read some Colleen Hoover because I've never read Colleen Hoover before and everyone raves about her, so I'm really excited to pick up this book in the month of March. So yeah, that is all the books that I read in the month of February and everything I plan to read in the month of March. I finally got around to starting some social media accounts, so if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or Goodreads, I will leave the links and usernames to that below, but I really appreciate it if you would go follow me on that. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Please subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I will see you next week. Bye guys!